Hello Google Workspace fans, it's James here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Notebook LM. For those of you unsure what Notebook LM is, it's your own AI powered digital research assistant. Unlike services like ChatGPT, where you give it a prompt, ChatGPT then scours the whole internet and gives you a response. Notebook LM doesn't do that. It only looks into the sources you've provided and gives you a response based on those sources. So it's far more concise. What you should know is there's two versions of Notebook LM. There's a consumer version, which is free for everybody. And there's Notebook LM Plus, which is part of Google Workspace and available if you have a Gemini license. That's the version I'm gonna be using through this work walkthrough. There are a few features of Plus that aren't included in the consumer one. When I do go and use those features, I'll let you know. To get started with Notebook LM, head over to notebooklm.google.com and you'll see this welcome page. It will list any previous notebooks you may have, and it will also give you the option to create a new notebook by clicking the Create New button in the top left-hand corner. Once you've created a new notebook, first thing you'll see is this window will pop up. And it's going to ask you to add sources. These are the bits of sources that you're going to give to it that it will then reference when it's giving you responses back to your prompt. You've got a few different types of sources you can add. So you can upload files from your computer. These could be PDF, text files, markdown files, or audio files like an MP3 file. You can also link to Google Docs and Google Sheets that are saved in your Google Drive. You can add websites and YouTube videos as sources, and you can also copy and paste text into, uh, into, the, uh, into this section to add that as a source too. Now you have a limit on sources. In the consumer version, you can add 30 sources. In the plus version that I've got here, you can add up to 300 sources. So I've now just jumped over to a notebook that I've pre-populated with sources. Once you've added sources, they'll appear in this column down the left-hand side called sources, and you can always add new sources by clicking the add source button and then just linking to the new sources that you want to add. With the sources column, you can turn sources on and off. So you may be asking a question to Notebook LM that you know doesn't need to reference a certain source. To do that, all you need to do is click the tick and deselect it. So any source you have deselected will not be used as a response to any prompt you put into Notebook LM. So that's how you control your sources. In the middle of the page, you've got your chat area. Your chat area is where you chat with Notebook LM. You've got the prompt down at the bottom, so this is where you enter your prompt. It also, based on the sources that I've already preloaded, it's come up with some suggested prompts that I may want to ask. So I'm gonna click on one of these, and um, it's gonna to go to Notebook LM. Notebook LM is now looking through the sources that I've got provided here. So just so you know, I've got a website source, two website sources, and two YouTube sources. I'm actually gonna use this to build a case study for one of our clients. So the two videos are our clients talking about the service and the two websites are actually the Kimberly IT website where it's got information about the service we offer. So as you can see, while I was doing that, it created this response to the question, how does Kimberly IT Google Workspace solution enhance business productivity? And it's come back and it's come back with this nice uh, bit of text about that. It's also, what you'll see is there's numbers after everything, and the numbers are where it's cited the information from. So if you wanna double check something, say for example, this sentence here, you might wanna click on the number one, or hover over it, and it'll tell you where you got it from. So it got this information from the Kimberly IT website about Google Workspace, and that's what it used when it was creating its response. So you can always see where the information's been cited from. Um, you can actually click on this to get a bit more detail, of where it got the information from. It'll just pop up in the sources page. Uh, but it's always citing where it's got its information from, so you can double check and make sure that the responses are correct. Um, with this, you can type in any any um, prompt you want at the bottom. So I'm gonna do a prompt now about creating a case study about this client. So I'm just gonna paste in my question that I've already got uh, pre-written. Uh, so I'm asking it to create a draft study about Max Surfacing and Road Surfing Company and how their IT has improved and part since they partnered with Kimberly IT and then highlight some of the benefits. So I'm gonna enter that text and then click on the arrow to send it to Notebook LM. Using those sources, it's now gonna go through and it's gonna create a case study for me, which is handy because I always find creating case studies from scratch a struggle, just getting those first few words down. But this is gonna give me a format and it's gonna give me some ideas of what I can do. I could then cut and paste that text into a Google Doc and edit it how I want to. So if I go back, you'll see here's the case study it's produced for me. It's quite a detailed one. We've got some paragraphs there, we've got some bullet points and it's built sections in. Now, it's kind of important that you know this. So with Google, with the chat section, nothing's saved. So if I were to close this notebook and come back, all this stuff in the chat area would vanish. It wouldn't be there. So if it comes back with a response that you want to keep hold of, it's very important that you click the save to note button in the bottom left hand corner. So if I click that, you'll see on the notes section on the right hand side, that response has now been saved. So I can click on that at any point and view that response. 
important to, uh, important to do that otherwise you might lose the response so if there's something comes back that you like click that save to note button to uh, save it and be able to refer to it earlier refer to it later on now with the settings in chat this is a feature that is exclusive to the plus you can kind of customize the responses back to you so if you click on the configure notebook button it will come up and you can configure the chat so you can define the define the conversational style that notebook lm will use when it's responding to you so you've got the default option you can have it as an analyst you can have it as a guide or you can actually create a custom one so you create it on custom you can give some uh, instructions on how it should respond so it's given an example here that you could have it as a phd student or you could pretend it to be playing a role a game a host of a role-playing game so if you're into dungeon and dragons it might be kind of useful if you wanted to have a a, uh, it to create the story for you um, I'll leave it on default and you can also sh choose the length of response so if you're getting responses that are too short or you want them to be longer you can change the uh, change it through here um, it's on the default by normal I had set it to the longer because I wanted a case study with a case study I wanted a bit more details in it therefore I selected the longer option moving to the far right and this column down here so this is where you've got the a audio overview so what the audio overview is it creates an ai powered podcast based on the sources here so it doesn't it doesn't base on anything you've got in the chat window it's just based on the sources so the ai will have a general discussion about the sources you have provided you can um, customize it slightly so you can give it some guidance i've already created the audio overview but if you haven't created one yet you'll see a button called generate and there's also a button called custom next to it and if you click on custom you can give it some information some guidance on how you want the audio overview to go ahead now there's a new feature that's been added to this called interactive mode and with interactive mode you can get involved in the ai podcast that has been created so if i click on interactive mode it will load up the podcast and what happens is the Two hosts will start their discussion. They'll go through the podcast and at any point I can hit join and the, the host will invite me in as if I'm a, a telephone caller into a, a, into a radio show or something like that. And I can ask them questions. I can give them information and they'll bring that in and they'll talk around that. So I'll give you a quick example now. I'm going to do it right near the start. So I'm not sure how well it will go, but in testing, it's been pretty, pretty good that I've done. So let's just start the podcast off. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this. All right, everyone get ready because today we are taking a deep dive into Google Workspace. Ooh, sounds exciting. So they're yeah, talking about Google Workspace, they're Google talking Workspace about the generally. sources we're going to be provided. focusing on and how at any point a UK I can hit the join button. IT uses it. Oh, hey there, how can we help? Hi, I'm James. I'm the founder of Kimberly IT. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Wow, James, it's great to have you here with us. It's fantastic to have the founder himself join our little podcast and you can see they're building it around me now because i've got involved at any point i can hit that join button and they invite me back into the conversation once the conversation is completed you can always download it in the top right hand corner you can download that audio overview and share it out with people i'm just going to close that now minimize that window and i'm going to go down to this section called notes so notes is just exactly what it says. You can add a note. So if you've got something in your on your mind that you just want to add, you can just add a note in there. It doesn't actually have any effect on anything overall, but you can put a note in there. It's just note taking. Uh, one of the things it does do is it gives you like a study guide, a briefing document, and an FAQ. So I click on briefing document. It's going to generate a briefing document. It generates it in the notes sections down here, and it's based on the sources. So if I were to load in a load of sources that I then wanted to brief to somebody, say someone like your your boss or someone higher up in the organization, I could use that briefing note. And if I click on it, you'll see it's created a quick briefing about what those sources are, what they cover, and all those kind of things. So it's saving you time there. So if you do have a document that you need to create a briefing for, load it into Notebook LM as a source and then use that briefing button and it will generate that for you. Likewise with Q&A. So if you need to generate a Q&A for something or an FAQ, put it in there and it will generate that for you. So it's quite a few bit, quite a lot of time saving features there. And anything you do create, all the notes get saved down here on the notes column. So you can always recall them in the future. The last two things that you get with the plus version is the ability to share your notebook. So just like a Google Doc, you can click on the share button. You can add the person's email address, create the level of access they have, and you can share it. And then they can also use this notebook as well with the sources you've already provided. And, and finally, you have an option for analytics. So if someone you do share it and people access it, you get some analytics about what's what they've been doing, how they've been using Notebook LM. 
But that's a basic guide of how to use Notebook LM. It really is a fantastic tool. I've been using it all the time. I've used it to look at study contracts, things like that. I even studied it for a lot, used it to look at um, car leases that we were getting, company car leases. I installed, I put the leases in as sources and I asked Notebook LM, is there anything here I should be aware of? Are the, what are the monthly costs and all that kind of stuff? And I was able to analyze that quite quickly and quite easily in detail. So worth having a play. I'd very much recommend going to notebooklm.google.com and giving it a try. I think you'll find you'll save quite a lot of time analyzing and getting information back about specific documents that you may have.